everyone. So last night, Boyan Bogdanovich put on an absolute show, 25 points in the third quarter and leading to 38 points. He is currently the Detroit Pistons leading scorer and he's shooting 44% from three, part of the 50-40-90 club. And of course, because of that performance, because of that outing, many teams are interested in Boyan Bogdanovich now and including the Los Angeles Lakers. And it really did feel like in many ways, it was sort of an audition uh, to the Lakers, right? He has one of his best games of his career against the Los Angeles Lakers. Of course, he's out there. He's just hooping. He's balling. Uh, you know, he's just doing what he's paid to do, right? And that's deliver for the team that he's on. But he wants to be on a contender. You know, he doesn't want to ride the last of his years on the Detroit Pistons. The Detroit Pistons signed him to an extension, one, to show other teams like that were worrisome that he wanted, you know, four years, 25 million a year. Like, no, he wants reasonable contract. He's willing to sign a shorter term deal. Uh, and it also gives the Detroit Pistons the flexibility going forward, right? They don't need to be in a rush to trade Boyan Bogdanovich. Do they want to trade him? Sure. I mean, they got him for a bag of peanuts. Why not get an actual asset that helps them uh, now or maybe in the future? Things along those lines, right? And so, of course, it makes sense that teams are lining up to try to acquire Boyan Bogdanovich, including the Lakers. The Lakers are in pursuit of Boyan Bogdanovich amongst other players. But sticking to Boyan, this is what uh, has been reported. The Lakers recently offered a trade package to Detroit for Boyan Bogdanovich, centered around one future first round pick with unspecified draft protections attached to it per Mark Stein, uh, the Stein line. Uh, and so, look. Boyan Bogdanovich for a first round pick after his performance last night, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, now, it looks like Detroit declined the offer currently. So, based on the reports and everything that I've been able to find, uh, it's not that Detroit isn't interested. It's just that, you know, you have 12 other teams, or as it was reported, uh, up to a dozen teams that are interested in Boyan Bogdanovich. Why take the first deal that's on the table, especially for a pick that's later on down the line, uh, and especially a protected first, uh, right? If some other team is willing to take on Boyan and give up uh, an unprotected first, maybe this year or something like that, if you're Detroit, you're probably going with that. Now, here's the advantage that the Lakers have is the expiring contracts, right? Because like most teams, like Phoenix, they would have to put up a package of probably long-term deals or work out like a three-team trade or something like that, right? And even the Lakers have uh, potentially explored three-team deals to try to land Boyan Bogdanovich in another piece. Uh, basically, Boyan is playing himself into a nice return for Detroit, right? Detroit's going to get a very nice return for Boyan, very likely. Now, personally, I don't think the Lakers should trade an unprotected first for Boyan. I know he has played absolutely insane. I know he would be arguably the best fit the Lakers could get next to Anthony Davis and LeBron James. A guy that's shooting 50, 40, 90. A guy that, you know, doesn't need the ball uh, to be effective. He can play on the ball. He's always a threat. You always got to keep an eye on him uh, just to be able to, you know, have LeBron drive or even Russ if they don't end up trading Russ. Russ driving and kicking out to Boyan. Uh, also, a lot of teams are starting to double team Anthony Davis. If you have Boyan on the court, you can't really do that. Like right now, uh, teams are, you know, daring Schroeder and Patrick Beverly and guys like that to shoot the three ball. But if you have a guy like Boyan Bogdan, then you can't really do that, right? Because Davis is a good and willing passer. I mean, he had seven assists last night. He can kick it out to the open shooter. And if Boyan is that open shooter, based on his stats, he's probably knocking that three down. Uh, so that's just a huge lift. So I completely get it. But here's the problem. His age is a real concern. You know, like, although his timeline based on his contract does line up with the Lakers perfectly as far as like LeBron James and stuff, because he'd have two more years. So uh, when his contract's up, basically everyone else's is except for like Anthony Davis, assuming they don't take on longer term salary, things like that. We'll, we'll see how this all unfolds, but you got to get more pieces than just boy on for that unprotected first. Um, maybe you're going and you're getting, you know, Sadiq Bey. Uh, there have been uh, reports that Sadiq Bey may be available. He also had a very nice performance, right? He actually showed some promise as well, uh, a sizable wing, 3 and D. Uh, if you could go and get him, maybe then you make it unprotected. But an unprotected first for just Boyan, as great as he is, there's still a lot of concerns with age, fit, He's not gonna. Sh he's not gonna score probably twenty a game on the Lakers as much as we'd love him to. He's not gonna get the shot attempts 
very likely that he is with Detroit, right? right? He's the number one option right now for Detroit. He's going to be the number three option at best on the Lakers. So, but he's still a guy that could give you, you know, 15 a night. And it's just, it's the efficiency that is good, right? He's, he doesn't need 30 shots. He doesn't need 25 shots. He could get you 15 points on, you know, 10 to 12 shots, uh, as opposed to, you know, some other players that, you know, they're going to have to take 20 shots to get you you know, 25 points. If Boyan has a game where he shoots 22 shots, he's probably getting you 30. So that's the difference. That's the factor. But you got to get more if you're the Lakers, right? The Lakers, if Boyan was the missing piece to make us a legit contender, absolutely go do it, right? If Boyan was all we needed, cool, go do it. The problem is we need more than just Boyan. And if the Lakers cave and give up an unprotected first for just Boyan, then Again, all the other teams are going to go, okay, so they are willing to cave. Okay, they are willing to, to give up those picks. Uh, and now the, the asking price is just going to get so much higher. And I know if Boyan goes to another team, people are going to be very disappointed. People are going to be very upset. But if, it, if it's just Boyan and an unprotected first, if you're the Lakers, you can't do it. Because you're, gonna, you're just going to end up continuing getting fleeced. Now you only have one first and Russell Westbrook. Now you need to find a deal that does that. Because as... I think Boyan makes us much, much better. Don't get me wrong. But does he make us a lock contender? I don't think so. But if you could work something out and get like a Sadiq Bay, or in my opinion, maybe you trade Russ in this scenario, right? Trade Russ in an unprotected first, get Boyan, get Sadiq Bay, and get like Alec Burke. Now, now I think that that's worth a, an unprotected first, right? I, I would hate to see Russ go. There's a lot of concerns that I have with Russell Westbrook leaving, uh, primarily Anthony Davis, right? Because Russell Westbrook's like the one guy that's setting up uh, Anthony Davis like frequently. Like all of his monster games, a lot of it have came from Russell Westbrook, right? And I'm not saying that the Lakers can't figure out how to get AD the ball outside of Russ. LeBron's also been more willing to get AD the ball, but like Russ just seems to have that chemistry with Anthony Davis. But if you can get an Alec Burke who can be a 3 and D, who's playing pretty solid this year, uh, you know, uh, shooting guard, and then get Boyan Bogdanovich, and then a young player in Sadiq Bey uh, that, you know, you could have come off the bench. That also gives you, you know, Kendrick Nunn, Damian Jones, JTA, and, you know, uh, um, uh, Patrick Beverly. Those guys, now maybe you could go look at, like, the, the Knicks deal, or, you know, maybe you go look at the Spurs deal, or go, go something like that, to where maybe now you go get those other two or three pieces to add to this team, and now you have a starting five of, let's say, like, Walker, uh, or, or Reeves, maybe you go Reeves in that part, point for, like, ball handling, but whatever, let's say, let's just say Walker, Alec Burke, Boyan Bogdanovich, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. That is a much better starting five than what they have right now. Now you actually have shooting threats on the floor next to LeBron and AD. You got defense and Walker and uh, uh, Alec Burke, as well as LeBron and Davis. Uh, you know, Boyan, not a great defender, but he at least tries. And then you got Sadiq Bey, a, a sizable wing who can come off the bench, 3 and D guy, uh, so that could really help. And then maybe you go look at like the, the, uh, the Knicks deal, and maybe you get Reddish, and you get Fournier, and now you got those two guys. Uh, Fournier could be a, a shooter off the bench. You got Cam Reddish for now in the future. So now you got these two young, sizable wings and Sadiq Bey and Cam Reddish. Uh, and you probably don't have to give up a first in that deal because they just the Knicks just want to unload Evan Fournier. So now you you kind of you, you basically got a handful of players now that bring you closer. Does that make you a contender again? I don't know, but it, it's more justifiable for that unprotected first. I just think if you're giving up an unprotected first for Boyan, does he really move the needle that severe to where you're able to compete with, you know, the the upper echelon teams, right? Like the Lakers absolutely need help. There is no doubt about it. And Boyan Bogdanovich can be that help. Right, he's a guy that can be productive on limited shots. He is a guy that can create his own shot, as we saw last night, and we've seen all season. If you've kind of followed him all season, he's a guy that can put the ball on the floor, go get eat, get nice little pull ups, create for himself. Uh, you know, get guys off the dribble, all of those things. Like he's a guy that can just go get a bucket, right, and shoot the lights out. And the Lakers desperately, desperately need a guy like this. But the problem is, you can't seem desperate. And the last thing the Lakers want is a bidding war. 
because we just don't have the assets that other teams have as far as draft capital. But the one thing we do have is the cap space flexibility, right? What we do have that a lot of other teams don't is we can we can get we can get you a first and we can get you assets, you know, maybe it's a first and a second or whatever. We can give you stuff and not ruin your cap space going forward, right? Like teams again, like Phoenix, uh, Milwaukee, teams like that, they're likely giving up longer term salary players to where Detroit has to take on those long term salaries. And is it a big deal to them? Probably not. But if you can have the cap flexibility, why not have the cap flexibility? You know, like what do they see more valuable? A potential, and that's what the question ultimately is for all these teams, right? All these teams that the Lakers are talking to, what is more valuable to these teams? Is was is a late first round pick from like you know the Suns or the the Bucks or one of these contending teams? Is a late first round pick plus taking on salary worth more to them than the Lakers' potential lottery pick five years from now and cap flexibility? That's what it basically boils down to. Do teams believe that the Lakers are going to be a lottery team come the time that the draft picks are available? If teams do, then I think that they'll value those picks more than a pick now. Because again, the Bucks, like you're probably getting like the 29th pick in the draft. Like, you know, do you do you really want to? And I'm just using them as an example. I'm not even necessarily saying anything, but like my point is these playoff teams, you're getting high draft picks that you're hoping turn into something, right? Or if you're a Detroit team, you look at it as like, okay, we're tanking for the bottom. We got Cade Cunningham, who's going to miss the season this year, which is fine. Um, if we get Victor Wimanyama, we got Cade and Victor for the next like 10 years. We should be good by the time the Lakers picks are available. And if we are, then hopefully those picks are now uh, lottery picks. And uh, we can use that to draft a guy to kind of put us over the top or use that as trade bait to go get a player that can put us over the top, right? Say Cade Cunningham and Victor Wimbiama get you, you know, plus the, the role guys that they got, you know, Duran, guys like that. Let's say they have enough and they're like a contender, but they're like, man, we're missing that piece. Well, we got the Lakers lottery pick. We got our own pick. We got all these other assets. Let's take that stuff go get a star that, you know, wants out or or a mid-tier guy that wants out or something like that, that, that he's the missing piece for us to now contend for a championship. That's very likely what teams is gonna, is, are going to weigh. Um, but Detroit is in no rush to trade Boyan, right? And they shouldn't be, you know, for being honest. Like, they, there's no reason for that. They got him for the next two years, right? So they don't need to trade him right this second. They could wait and just let teams bid, let the asking price continue to go up, but that's bad news for the Lakers. But at least the Lakers have shown that, hey, we'll make a move. We'll make this deal, right? Like they offered uh, uh, Kendrick Nunn, Patrick Beverly, and an, and a protected first. But if you're going for an unprotected first, I don't think you can do it just for Boyan. That's just my opinions. But as always, I pass the question on to you. I'd love to hear yours. Let me know down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think Boyan's worth an unprotected first? Do you think no? You got to get more than just Boyan for an unprotected first. And look, it's not even so much... It's not even so much just uh, the whole, like, you know, F them picks type thing, right? Like, if you can make a right deal that makes you better now, absolutely, go do it. Give up the first. I don't care about the first five years from now. Figure it out five years from now. But it's the perception, right? Teams are going to notice. If the Lakers give up an unprotected first for Boyan and nobody else is willing to do that, then teams know, oh, we can fleece the Lakers. They are desperate, right? And, And things like that. And it's like, does Boyan make us a lock contender? I don't think so. I think he makes us much better. I think he makes us, you know, instead of a, a top, you know, a play-in team to a, a top six seed, you know, somewhere in the 10 to six range, I think is what we are right now. He Maybe he makes us a four to five range. You know, okay, cool. But that still, in my opinion, isn't enough to make us a contender. And now we have one less first to try to go get you know, a couple more pieces that now make us a contender. That's my concern. But anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below.